Hey guys, this is Matt from Nod Studios here, and welcome back. Today we're going to be playing some more Super Power 2 as Nigeria. And in the previous episode, we went to war with the Kingdom of Italy over here, and we ended up annexing the vast majority of their lands. As you can see, though, they still do exist. They have a little bit of land there in Albania and also northern Italy. But besides that, you know, they have no power now. Anybody could swoop them and take them over. They only have 11,000 soldiers. They're slowly starting to build it back up. But other than that, they have no power anymore. They are completely cut down to size. And we also released a bunch of their puppet nations, like Iraq, Egypt, Sudan, those sorts of countries that they basically had power over because they were militarily occupying them. Unfortunately, though, it looks like the Kingdom of Italy's reign has had a lasting effect on the countries that they have occupied. Both Egypt and Sudan, as well as Iraq, all have terrible, terrible GDPs per capita, and their corruption rates are through the roof. And that's mostly due to the Kingdom of Italy, because they came over, they conquered them, they didn't allow them to grow, and they basically just stagnated as puppets to the Italian Empire. So diving into the episode, the first thing I want to go ahead and do is create a new naval unit. So we're going to go ahead and go into the military tab, hit design, new design, and we're going to scroll down and let's see, hmm, uh, let's do, do we have any aircraft carriers? I don't think we do, do we? No, we do not. We don't even have any frigates. Yeah, we should actually do a frigate instead. Let's go ahead and max out all the stats there for this vehicle. Alright, and we'll choose a nice little spiffy design. I'm gonna go with something very subpar and unimpressive. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll just go with this because I think it's actually the smallest ship on here. Oh, no! This one is probably the smallest one. Yeah, I think it's that one. This one right here. It appears to be the smallest. And it doesn't look like we can make any changes to the color, unfortunately. So, the reason why I'm going ahead and designing a new naval unit this time around, we don't really need it at this particular point in time. Honestly, I'm fine with where my navy is. And I don't really have too much of a use for it for right now. However, someone in the previous episode suggested a name for our naval units. So I'm going to go ahead and design one and use that name before the series ends or, you know, before I forget or anything like that. The person who recommended this name was Sa'ad Mohammed or Sa'ad Mohammed. Uh, I don't know if I'm really pronouncing that right. It's S-A-A-D Mohammed. So I, I apologize if I butchered your name. I think it's Sa'ad. If I butchered that, I completely apologize. Anyways, my horrible pronunciation aside, he wanted me to go ahead and create a unit and name it Lonely Ship Mark 1. So we're going to go ahead and, oops, spelled lonely wrong. <laughs> lonely Ship Mark 1. And there we go. We're going to go ahead and create that bad boy in the honor of Sa'ad. So there you go. You've been forever immortalized in our Superpower 2 playthrough. Congratulations. <laughs> Anyways, guys, besides that, we need to really focus on our economy. And we need to focus on getting the economy better into where we want it to be. So honestly, what I'm thinking of doing right now is just waiting a little bit of time until our debt accrues, and then we could go ahead and drop it on the GSA. It'll increase our relations with them, and we could also spend a bunch of money putting money into the economy and stimulating the economy. And actually, I think I might even do that right now while we have a surplus, because why wait, you know? Why wait for that surplus to be spent up when, you know, we could just invest it? So we're going to go ahead, go into our resources tab, and I'm just going to invest a bunch of money into the various areas of our economy. I'm going to start out with services and then go to food, and we'll see where we end up. I'll see you guys in a little bit when we are finished. And welcome back, everybody. So here we are. I've went ahead and poured a buttload 
of money into the economy. I think we spent a total of $34 trillion on the economy, just boosting production and stuff like that. I only managed to stay within the services industry. So basically, I put a bunch of money into construction, health and care, retail, legal services, and market and advertising. As you can see, our market share in our production of health and care is huge, absolutely huge. And I just thought that would be a great place to start. And going over to the other side of the ocean and looking at the GSA, we can see that we actually put them into debt. So <laughs> thank you, GSA, for being so generous. You're now $2 trillion in debt after being... <laughs> Get this, guys. After being in a surplus of $32 trillion. So, absolutely insane. Um, completely spent all of the GSA's money and put them into debt. But, you know, it was for a good cause, okay, guys? It was for a great cause. Just as a little time check, we are at, uh, now in 1997. And it's we're actually about to cross over into 1998, it looks like. So that's pretty good, and voila! It looks like our economy has went ahead and adjusted itself for all of the various, you know, d changes that we have made. Um, let's see, what's going on here? All right. I think we could probably afford a little bit of a tax deduction. Of course, we always want to try and keep it as low as possible. And we'll pour a lot of money into research once again, because we can now afford it. There we go. We'll put a little bit more into health and care. How does our death rate look? It about equals our birth rate. It's only 0.1% away. That's not too bad. Oh, yeah. And look at our development. That is absolutely beautiful, man. We are well above the world average in terms of our development. All right, this budget right here looks really great to me. As you can see, I lowered the personal income tax modifier just a little bit more, down to an even 73%. Other than that, I didn't really change too much else other than what we had already done. So yeah, I mean, this looks really good. We're all set to go ahead and exit out of that. So now that the economy is all set, we're going to go ahead and focus once again on our covert operatives over here. And basically what I wanna try and do is become friends in a very nefarious manner with Japan. And the reason why I'm doing this, my train of thought, is that basically when I become great friends with Japan, I'll be able to ally them and form a great friendship with them militarily. And the reason why I wanna do that is because the Greater German Reich also has an alliance with them. So if I ever go to war with the Greater German Reich, or if they ever declare war on me, if I am allies with Japan, my train of thought is we won't go to war with Japan because they're our friends. They won't go to war, uh, you know, defending the Greater German Reich or in defense of them because we're really good friends with them and they don't want to jeopardize our friendship necessarily over the Greater German Reichs. All right, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is move some of our covert cells that are in the kingdom of italy over to japan so i've already moved two of them and i'm going to take the last one and actually move him into kenya and the reason why i want to do this is because i want to stage a coup d'etat in kenya in order to get better relations with them and maybe create a sort of puppet situation or something like that so that way we can have you know, another ally to rely on and someone that we don't have to worry about hating us like the rest of the world does. Also, really quickly, I'm going to go ahead and activate our foreign cells that are in Brazil, Uruguay, and Argentina. We'll just do uh, one of them for each for right now. Now they're all ready to go, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is create a new mission here. And really quickly, I just want to once again look at their corruption rate. Okay, a 93% corruption rate, and they are a monarchy. Hmm. So basically, we have a really, really good chance of completing any sort of covert missions within their country. So we could try and do a coup d'etat, but if it's, you know, unsuccessful, it's really going to make them mad. Hmm. We have to do a high complexity one, too. I mean, I guess we could try 
one coup d'etat and maybe that would work I just don't want to make them so mad at me that you know they're gonna end up declaring war yeah we'll, we'll stage a coup d'etat we'll get that preparing and all cooking we're gonna do the same exact thing with our foreign cell in uh, Kenya here so we'll go ahead and confirm that appointment sweet Alrighty, and Brazil over here. Beautiful old Brazil. Let's go ahead and create an espionage mission against them, against their civilian sector in their cereals category. And we're going to go ahead and frame Italy. And the reason why I'm doing Italy is because they're super small. And if I get them mad, it doesn't really matter. They don't have any allies anymore. They're not a part of the Axis Alliance. And they're really weak. So <laughs> I'm just going to frame Italy. There we go. Beautiful. It looks like our uh, Japan 1 cell there is almost ready to go. Come on, just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Yeah, there you go. Let's go ahead and execute that mission. And wow, okay, it was a success. Huh, I was not expecting that. What do our relations look like now? Oh, negative 15. That is still so terrible, but it's a lot better than it was before. Now, you know, I was wondering, since the Greater German Reich doesn't have a really high corruption rate, they're actually a really stable country, and that's largely due to the fact that they're a single-party democracy. And in this game, single-party democracies are the second-best thing right alongside a multi-party democracy. So... That's the reason why they remained super powerful. And also their economy is really stellar. Um, but what I'm thinking is, I don't know if I do an espionage mission in Japan and frame the Greater German Reich. Since the Greater German Reich doesn't have a huge corruption rate, I don't know if that's going to affect the uh, success rate. I mean, I guess the only way to test it out is to go ahead and do it. I'm kind of apprehensive though, I don't know. I don't want to destroy the, the relations that we just built up from doing that successful coup d'etat. We're going to do it anyways, whatever. Balls to the walls. We're going to frame the Greater German Reich. And yeah, just a simple espionage mission. That looks good to me. Oh, why did I get a thingy over here? Advisor warning. Oh, Burundi. Wait, what? Burundi's gonna be annexed by Italy? Huh? What? Hold on a second. <laughs> what is this? Why, what, what are you ch <laughs> What are you chumps doing? Oh, wait, is that just a country that they're... Oh. I think that might just be one of the countries that they have military access with. Oh, they're actually trying to annex this little country over here. That's just, uh, I think, a country that they have maybe a military alliance or military access with. So that's not really a big deal. I don't really care. They're never going to have a military because they're basically in straight-up anarchy right now. They have no economy. They have super high corruption rate. And their budget is down the gutter. They have no money. So, I'm not really worried about that. But yeah, they are annexing a country that they control in Africa. So, that's kind of interesting. Now, these guys are all ready to go ahead and execute their missions. So, I'm going to start off with the Empire of Japan. And boom, it was a success. So, my thought is, I don't think it really matters as long as the target country is super, super corrupt. We're going to go ahead and create another new mission doing the same exact thing, except this time we're going to select the tobacco sector, and we're still going to frame the Greater German Reich. Boom. We'll see how that works out. Now, how bad did that affect their relationship? Eh, it really didn't do much. Yeah, my, my thing is, I don't think the espionage missions really affect the relationship too much. So maybe we should actually do like a framed assassination. Yeah, let's do it. Why not? We have the best covert cells in the whole entire world. We have nothing to lose here. Oh, we hit year 2000. 
wow, we're finally flowing over into modern times. Could you imagine, though, like the greater German Reich conquering all this territory and just managing to hold on to it until modern times? That would be crazy. Our world would be so different. So insanely different. Anyways, let's go ahead, set up that mission. Enough babbling. There we go. Sweet. A low-complexity assassination mission. That should do the trick. Honestly, I think that's what did the trick last time with Italy. So hopefully it'll do the same exact thing here. Let's go ahead and initiate our coup d'etats. Oh, that was actually an espionage. Oh yeah, we're trying to make Brazil hate other countries. Or actually, rather, tarnish their international reputation. Yeah, it didn't really work out. <laughs> that mission ended up failing. Let's go ahead and activate Kenya. Boom! Successful coup d'etat! Sweet! So how do our relations look with there? Ooh, negative three. Alright. While our covert cells are preparing their missions, I'm going to go ahead and just create a few more units here. So that way, if we ever do go to war with the Greater German Reich, we'll be able to defend ourselves. We're going to go ahead and create 5,000 of these infantry vehicles, and we're gonna create 5,000 air defense units as well. The mobile launchers, we're only gonna do increments of 500 for those, but we'll do a bunch of different orders. Same exact thing for the artillery guns. Oh, and you know what? We don't even have any air units. We should really actually design an air unit. Let's go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna put the game on pause. Oh, our foreign cells are ready to go. Alrighty. Well, let's go ahead and execute those missions. Boom, the espionage mission was a success. And, whoa, the assassination mission was a success as well. Sweet. Oh, yeah, Japan and Germany really do not like each other now. Was that enough to get rid of the alliance? No, it wasn't. Dang it. Alrighty. I guess we're going to have to set up another assassination mission. Same exact thing. Hopefully this time, it'll completely throw them off the edge. And they're going to hate each other. Alright, back to the unit design. Let's go ahead and create... Um, for right now, we'll start off with the transport helicopter. I think that'll be good. We'll max out the stats. And make it gold. Actually, we'll, we'll make it a desert sand color. We'll name it Sandstorm. Yeah, yeah, that's such a great name. Came up with that one on the spot. No thought required. Um. Yeah, we'll just do this little puny helicopter with a bunch of different windows. That looks pretty good to me. Confirm. And we'll do another design while we're at it for an attack helicopter. We'll go ahead and give this helicopter a brown tint to it. And we'll name it Mr. Hanky. Whoops. Not a <laughs> not a less than sign. Mr. Hanky with propellers. And we're going to completely butcher the spelling of it and spell it with all E's. <laughs> there we go. Because it's brown. It looks like a flying dookie. Mr. Hanky. South Park. Yeah. Hopefully you guys get the reference. There we go. Confirm. And we'll do one final design. This time, we'll do a fighter aircraft. Go ahead and max her out. And I think we're going to go ahead and use this design right here. Hey, it actually looks like an Ayla Mao ship. Oh, that's what we got to name it. We definitely got to name it that. It is going to be named the Ayla Mao. <laughs> All right, there we go. Sweet. Can, can we give it a different color? Oh, no. It can only be gray. All right, that's kind of lame, but there we go. A Lamau technology doesn't allow for glorious color changes, I suppose. Yeah, it's kind of lame. Let's go into our build menu now that we have designed all of those units. We'll go ahead and create increments of 50 for every single one of these units. And there we go. So that should set us up with a really, really beefy Air Force. However, the Air Force is going to be built after all of our infantry units so it might be a while before we actually get those troops but honestly i'm fine with waiting i don't really mind we can cancel this personnel order 
because it's going to take ridiculously long and honestly i'm really not interested in the additional soldiers i'm more interested in the land units and the air force units Ooh, and i think the foreign cell here in japan is ready to go ahead and execute its mission let's go ahead and do it oh no it failed oh yeah germany did not approve of that okay yeah <laughs> that's not good okay now we're definitely gonna have to wait a little while before we go to war so i think i'm gonna let four or five years pass to go ahead and let our relationship recover and i'll be back when that's all finished welcome back everybody we're now in the year 2005 and our relations are looking better than they ever have since the start of the game <laughs> absolutely glorious guys the world does not look like a kool-aid man anymore i'm very happy about that so i think i'm gonna go ahead and end this episode off here guys thank you so so much for tuning in if you enjoyed this one please leave a like please comment and please 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 subscribe it really helps out guys and it really does mean a lot so once again thank you so so much and i will see all of you lovely amazing people in the next episode Bye-bye.